taking time out of your busy day. I know. Good to be away from all of it. Um, we have this morning 133 COVID positive patients out of our 309 uh, total patients in the hospital. Uh, we now have uh, had to dedicate five nursing units uh, to COVID. Um, we are very close to our ICU being filled with COVID patients. Uh, right now, I have um, four, uh, 20 COVID patients, um, um, 25 COVID patients in ICU, 17 are on a ventilator. Um, of the 17 patients on a ventilator, they range in age from 25 to 75. Uh, 14 of those patients are under the age of 65. One of those patients has had the vaccine. Um, I, I will tell you uh, that I don't care what variant it is. We, there's only one protocol for treatment. If you have COVID, we have that one protocol. We don't care about the variant. We don't test for it. I can tell you, I don't care whether you've been vaccinated or not, because dead is dead. The, um, I'm sure you don't read the Citrus County Chronicle, uh, but the front line story is a 29-year-old EMT who came to our hospital and died of COVID this week. Left a five-year-old kid. We are losing people. Last week, we lost a 21-year-old. This week, we lost um, uh, a 25-year-old. Uh, this is killing people, and it is totally unnecessary. Totally unnecessary. We were at the breaking point Wednesday night. I had 108 patients in my 29-bed ER. Um, thank you, Robin, for doing the testing. We have people coming to the, for testing, and, and they get mad at us because we test them positive, and we send them home because they don't meet the criteria for admission, even if I had a bed for them. Uh, or uh, beds are not a problem for us, it's the staff. My staff are worn out. I have 62 people out with COVID right now. None of them are hospitalized, but 62. I don't have the staff to take care of these really, really sick patients that we have. And, it, and it's totally unnecessary if people would get the vaccine, if people would wear masks um, and, and wash their hands. Um, the last, I'm pleased to report, the last 36 hours we've stabilized. It's still really, really bad, but compared to Wednesday, um, you know, we're, we're not pulling our hair out and um, having our nurses work double their number of patient assign assignments. Uh, but it, it's um, a, a very, very serious situation. Hopefully, interestingly enough, this particular surge, uh, we were the tip of the sword. Uh, we, l last year, south, uh, south of Tampa peaked first. It looks like um, we're going to peak first, and so hopefully maybe, you know, that's where we are and headed down. So happy to answer any other questions that you might have. Mickey, you had, you had mentioned that the vast majority of the people that you're seeing in the ICU are unvaccinated. Um, are you seeing that that's the same with your staff that are out? Um, Fifteen of the uh, folks that are out are vaccinated. What's, what's happening, we believe, is the variants are... Um, uh, rapidly increasing, and particularly the Lambda variant, uh, the the vaccines are not effective. It's got two different spikes on it. Um, so not only is it is it rapidly progressing, but the vaccines aren't as effective um, uh, against that. And again, that would be totally avoided if we had had enough people get it so that we're not spreading. We believe that even more people are asymptomatic with it. So that means any one of you folks can have the virus right now, feel perfectly well, and if you just breathe to the person to the left or the right of you, you'll infect them. Uh, I appreciate uh, Commissioner Navarud's uh, position. The, the health experts are saying that just because you've had the virus, you don't get the maximum antibodies, and uh, if you, even if you've had the virus, you should get uh, vaccinated. Uh, yesterday, the FDA approved boosters for a small uh, number of folks uh, immunocompromised, I expect, with 
within the next 30 or 60 days, they'll approve boosters for old 